his wife. That's what I was told. I mean, I had to watch the news in a few days. I was told they discovered her father was white. Unquote. To be clear, Harris is biracial. Harris's father is Jamaican and black. There is, here he is holding his daughter when she was a child. Her mother was Indian. Someone who claimed to be Jackson's spokesperson then apologized. But Jackson's team says that apology was not authorized. This false statement about Harris' charges has been repeated so many times, even the vice president herself is not acknowledging it. But my next guest will, L.D. Granderson, L.A. Times op-ed columnist, host of Life Out Loud with L.D. Granderson podcast, and visiting scholar at Western Michigan University. L.D., so glad to have you on tonight. I've been wondering what you were thinking about when you heard that what was your reaction? Because I know all of my chats started to go. Do you see this? Do you hear about this? What was your reaction? My first reaction was, why are you still giving this story oxygen, Janet? Or anyone, for this matter. You know, it was, I, I felt that the, the, the two times that I've seen the vice president sort of address this criticism that recently really started with, you know, the former president of NABJ, National Association of Black Journalists Conference, um, you know, she sort of, you know, brushed it aside because it was, you know, nonsensical. And I felt the same way when I heard Jenna Jackson's remarks. It's like, why are you using your platform to weigh in on something nonsensical when there's so many real things that are going on in the world? And I recognize that you were asked a question, but, you know, you are, uh, you know, an icon. You've been famous basically your entire life. You know how to pivot from a question, and yet you chose to use your time in that way. That was really disappointing. I wish I could hear the audio as well, because I find myself wondering, like, what with all the context around it? Maybe it's me thinking there must be some other reason or something that she said, or maybe it's just for people take it at face value of what she, in fact, did say. But listen to what Whoopi Goldberg said about it today. Janet Jackson is not a political animal. Yeah. She does, she's, a, she's a musician. She, her life is doing this, and she's warning her brother. So that's right. See, I, I am, I am, you know, I sometimes have said stuff, and you know, I was wrong. But people want you to say something right away, you know. But when people are coming at you, mm -hmm. saying, "Hey, you're not paying, you're dumb, you don't know, you, you know, you don't want to answer people." Now she may not be overtly political, and, and we we do recognize her brother Tito Jackson, who I had interviewed, it was just great, and he passed away just recently. Um, given that background that will be discussed, does she have responsibility to make sure what she says on her platform is accurate, or are we putting too much into what she had to say? Well, I think first, you know, as long as we don't respond to Janet Jackson with the same sort of fervor that we do the former president, then I think we're fine. I think when we start equating those two is when, you know, we as a society start getting in trouble, because to Whoopi's point, this isn't her number one gig. This isn't her day job. She's she's a musician. She's also an actress. She's been an entertainer her entire life. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that she doesn't know anything about politics. It's just that I don't think that if you look at the spectrum of her career, you would think of her as a political animal. You know, real nature. <laughs>